So what is Batman? The video game. It's here. Batman the video game from Sunsoft for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Let the battle begin. Batman is the cash cow that keeps on giving. You slap Batman on your property, and more than likely, you're going to see a profit. That's a difference from the rest of the DC right now, which is a complete dumpster fire. Toys, movies, embarrassing clothes, all with Batman's monkey face on it. This game isn't the first, but damn if it isn't one of the best games featuring the Cape Crusader. Batman the video game was released in 1989 by Sunsoft and released further on the Game Boy, Sega Genesis, and PC Engine. This game was loosely based upon a 1989 movie of the same name, keeping the overarching plot of Joker doing something stupid and Batman chasing after him like James Gunn in DC fanbase, but adding in regular enemies and other things to not make the game super boring. You control Robert Pattinson as he makes his way through five different levels, each with three to four sections of platforming, dudes, and environmental hazards. Holy shit! You walk around punching like only Batman does and actually platform Ninja Gaiden style by hanging on the walls and jumping on the platforms. Unlike Ninja Gaiden, Batman's platforming is a little tighter and he won't snap into walls that come into his immediate vicinity. So it feels a lot more controlled, though you can't scale walls like Ryu Hayabusa. This still won't stop Michael Keaton from accidentally jumping off platforms frequently, though there's a lot less instant death pits in this game. George Clooney isn't alone with the fist, however. On top of enemies dropping pussy emblems, which will give you points, they also drop ammo for Val Kimmer's weapons, which includes the Batarang, Bat Disc, and the Bat Poon, which totally doesn't kill anyone because non-lethal pellets, see? Each weapon shoots in its own arc and has differing range, all of which cost different amounts of ammo. The enemies themselves aren't too challenging, either being gormless goons who just run forward or specifically position themselves to be at the edge of the platform you are just trying to jump to. Something I found out while doing this video is that most of these regular enemies are actual Ben Affleck villains just copy pasted, such as Deadshot, Heatwave, KG Beast, and a few more. Not bosses, who lineups include Killer Moth, Firebug, and Joker himself, but just regular enemies. Guess you can tell where they ended up on the totem pole. Anyway, something that I haven't mentioned yet is that this game is actually really hard. You have a life bar that can be depleted quickly due to both enemies and hazards, and the game is a little stingy with the life pickups. You are given two lives and then game over, though the game starts you off at the last non-boss section, so you aren't given too much of a penalty. This will motivate you to pick yourself back up and get smeared by the next cheap enemy or boss coming your way, not to mention some of the hazards that actually feel cheaply unavoidable similar to Ninja Gaiden. This builds up to a pitch with the later bosses, some which will cause you to pull your hair out. But besides this, the game is actually damn good, especially in an age where movie games weren't expected to be more than cheap shovelware. The graphics are actually really nice for the platform, the cutscenes are damn polished, and if you don't enjoy this absolute banger of a soundtrack, Kevin Conroy will haunt your nightmares. May you rest in peace. A damn fine addition to anyone's NES library. This game gets four Batmans out of five. Can you drop a heart for me, please? I don't wanna do this again. Do this again. Yes, thank you. Answer my prayers. No, don't go away. No! Come on.